This is Melanie, the Ice-type gym leader exclusive to Pokemon Shield. She is considered to be one of the strongest gym leaders in the region, being able to win even against Raihan. Yet in the game, she ends up losing to Alistair in the first round of the Champion Cup Finals. This scripted game event made me wonder what would happen if Melanie had some free will and showed off her actual skill. So I'm going to play through the whole game as Melanie and see if she can actually defeat all of the gym leaders and become champion. To add an extra level of spice, this run will be in Pokemon Sword instead of Shield since both B and Gordy have a type advantage against this cool Pokemon. Oh my, you think a silly little type advantage is enough to get in my way, dear? That's usually how these games work. <laughs> I've been a gym leader since my 20s. Do you know how many people have come to challenge me using Pokemon that have a type advantage? I guess you make a good point, but this will also be hard since most of your team isn't available until after the 6th gym. And that's why I'll bring all of them. You're just gonna roll into the first gym with a full team of ice types? Doesn't that seem a bit unfair to Milo? Well, I can't leave my babies at home now, can I? What about Gordy? He's not a baby anymore. Gordy's finally become a gym leader, which is why I can go traveling with you now. Oh, right. I should mention that this is a part of a series where I travel across the region with a different gym leader as a Pokemon on their team. If you like this style of video, do check out the rest of Season 1 and Galar linked below, and consider subscribing so you don't miss the Paldean adventures coming soon. Now, uh, where was I? I usually add Pokemon to the team as they become available, but this is the one trainer in the entire game where this tradition simply wouldn't work since half of her team isn't available until after her gym. You need the water bike to get a Lapras, 8 badges to get the hidden ability their man at hand, and an entirely different video game to get Ice Q. My options were to either use only half of the team that is available for the majority of the run, or bring her whole team along for the entire ride. And since I have suffered through the early game for all 19 of my previous runs, just this once, I want to remind myself how things go when you roll up to the first gym with a full team of six. I am so sorry Milo. Little Snom can two-shot the first flower, but stands no chance against Milo's Dynamax power. For some reason, I thought that I can come in with an under-leveled Lapras and just sweep, but my silly little ice cream brain forgot that Lapras has a weakness to grass-type moves, so don't mess with Milo. Thankfully, Darumakano's Avalanche, which is strong enough to one-shot his Eldegoss. For a second there, I thought we might actually lose, but to be honest with you gamers, using a full team just doesn't feel fair or challenging, so so I think we need to adjust the rules a little bit. I agree. It's no fun if my opponent doesn't even stand a chance. I prefer to at least give them a little hope of winning. Right, so how about this? You can keep using Lapras, and then you get one more Pokemon for every gem badge you earn. How does that sound? So you want me to fight Nessa with just Lapras? Well, when you put it that way, I think it might be a bit too challenging. Impossible, even. She's been the main roadblock for almost every trainer I've traveled with. Huh, sounds like you don't believe in me. I mean, you did bring six Pokemon to the first gym. How rude. Fine, I guess I'll just have to show you. And then, you'll owe me an apology. Instead of Dynamaxing right away, Melanie decides to use Ancient Power on Goldeen, which triggers its effect to boost all of Lapras' stats by one stage. And since Nessa's Fishy is bulky enough, Melanie managed to get a second boost from Ancient Power before knocking it out. At this point, all of our stats are doubled, and just before knocking out the Aracuda, Ancient Power's effect procs a third time. That's some real good luck there. But even with a triple boost, Lapras cannot simply one-shot Nessa's Dreadnought. However, the real benefit of all these boosties can be seen when Nessa tries to attack us. Yeah, so as it turns out, Nessa stood no chance here. And not just because of the ancient power buffs, I used the damage calculator to see what would have happened if Melanie didn't get any of the power boost from ancient power, and it turns out, she would still win, with just one Pokemon. I don't even know what to say. I believe what you should be saying is, I'm sorry I doubted you, Melanie. Uh, do I have to? It's a bit cringe, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes, you do. Unless you want to get on my bad side. And trust me, dear, you don't. And here, I thought Clara was the craziest trainer in Galar. What's that you say? Uh, nothing. I'm sorry I doubted you, Melanie. Good. That wasn't too hard now, was it? Anywho, now that I've won, I get another Pokemon for these gym battles, right? Yep. Hmm, Kabu's gonna be a tough one. Aha! <laughs> 
I'll choose... Darumaka. Although it looks like this little guy can barely do any damage since Ninetales instantly sets it on fire and then one-shots it with an ember. So once again, she'll have to rely on Lapras to solo the gym. This time, Melanie does not wait to Dynamax and uses Max Geyser to set up some rain. That way, she can easily one-shot Kabu's Arcanine. And since Lapras also has a 4 times effective Rock-type move, his poor Santa Scorch does not stand a chance. Her next Pokemon of choice was Snom, and it ended up evolving after Melanie took it to the museum and Hammerlock and rounded up some Team Yell grunts that were causing trouble near Route 6. Speaking of trouble, Melanie tried to bargain with me about getting one more Pokemon on her team. According to her logic, if she gets Lapras plus one Pokemon per gym badge, she should have gotten one more Pokemon after Milo, but chose not to use it against Nessa since I was doubting her skills. And when I tried to counter her argument, she just got colder and colder towards me. If I were to make an analogy, I'd say that she's ice so thick you can park a bunch of cars on top of it and it still wouldn't budge. Anyways, I gave in and added Ice Q to the active team. Then it was time to face off against B, the other major hurdle during these character runs. Melanie leads with Frostmoth who takes a turn to set up Hail, then hits Hitmontop with a Hurricane. But that's not nearly strong enough to take down this spinning top of a Pokemon and B gets to knock us out with a Revenge. Ice Q can step in to finish off Hitmontop and then tries to slow down Pangoro with an Icy Wind, but B decides to set up Workup which boosts his attack stat. And she does it again, so this is gonna be a problem. Usually, Ice Q can negate one physical attack per battle thanks to its ability, but since Pangoro has Mold Breaker, it can just circle throw us into oblivion. Thankfully, we're fast enough to attack first with their Manitan, so it finishes off this bulky bear. Sadly, we are not bulky enough to one-shot the Surf Edge, so Lapras will once again have to carry. Our first order of business is to set up an Aurora Veil with Max Resonance, then we take a turn to guard against Machamp, and finally set up some rain with Max Geyser. Meanwhile, B is setting up her Max Cheese Strikes, which boosts her critical hit rate to an uncomfortably high level. That's why it protected for one turn. And considering how little damage we do, Melanie decided to try and use Sing. But that move has a 50% accuracy, which in these games feels like 15% accuracy. Thankfully, we managed to land a hit on our second try and then crash some waves into the sleeping Machamp to win the battle. Having achieved victory, Melanie makes her way towards Balanly and adds one more Pokemon to her team. Me! Not because I'm actually going to battle, but as punishment for doubting her again in the previous one. She really needs to chill out about that. Up next is Opal with her usual tricks. Weezing is Togekiss, which took a large hit from our Icy Winds, but then finished off Frostmoth with a 4 times effect of Ancient Power. Out next was Ice Q, who also spammed Icy Wind until knocking out her Cloud Bird thing, but its main job was to tank the Intimidate from Mantwile and then cool down its HP. That way her physical attacking Dermanitan can come in for an easy sweep. That left a Giant Cake which did quite a number on our Angry Snowman, but since it used up 2 turns on Dermanitan, we could just guard to stall out the final turn of Dynamax and then put it in the freezer for later. And now that we've got 5 badges in the bag, Melanie has her full team ready to rock, Ice Cold Clown included. Although this one also seems a bit reluctant to join her team. Anyways, time flies when you're chilling in a Pokeball, and we had made it to Sir Chester before I knew it. There, we would battle Gordy. Man, I kinda miss him. You've met my boy before? Yeah, I've traveled with him in another world. And? What did you think? He's a pretty cool guy. One of the few trainers that didn't give me any trouble at all. It makes me so happy to hear that. Happy? I thought you and him weren't on good terms. Well, we do disagree on a lot of things, and I might have been a little too harsh on him. Uh, a little. Excuse me? Nothing. Mm-hmm. So anyways, even though he decided to rebel and specialize in rock types instead, I still want to see him happy. Unfortunately, he hasn't smiled around me in a long time, which is why I started the official Gordy fan club. You started the Gordy fan club? Well, yes, dear. After all, he might not smile for his mother, but when it's for his fans, ah, uh, that's good enough for me. Ooh, I know. Want to see some of his baby pictures? Uh, no thanks. I'll pass. Aw, come on. On. Just look at how pudgy cute he is. <sighs> Melanie, you're not good at taking no for an answer, are you? Gordy must have rubbed off on you because you're starting to sound exactly like him. Probably because you're so pushy about things being done your way. I didn't want to see that picture, let alone have it shoved in my face. Aw, oh, come on. It was just a picture, dear. But no means no, Melanie. And this isn't the first time. You also brought all of your Pokemon to the first gym. You forced me to apologize for hurting your ego. I hate the to say it, but even Clara was more sensible than you. Who's Clara? And whatever do you mean, dear? I'm perfectly sensible. Hmm. But since you intend on being so rude, how about I give you some time to think about how you should talk to your trainer? 
She really just put me back in a pokeball, huh? I guess I did lose my composure a bit, but I really don't know how to deal with people who are as pushy as her. Uh, I probably should think of some better way to get through to her though. If I sounded like Gordy, then I'm probably trying things that haven't worked in the past. On the bright side, I can still see what's going on from in here and it looks like she's about to go challenge Gordy himself. Melanie leads with Frostmoth, which gets one shot by Gordy's rock throw. Ice Key was out next, using its newly learned Freeze Dry attack to deal major damage. This only works because Freeze Dry does super super effective damage to water types, and Barbaracko is part water. Shuko is another major hurdle since we can barely dent his HP. Thankfully, its attacks are so weak that we can just spam ice and rocks at each other until it faints. Gordy is smart enough to use Wonder Room to protect his Stone Journer from our special attacks. Then he sets up some stealth rocks and body slams our tiny penguin. Bad news for him is that Wonder Room is still active and their Manitan uses physical attacks. That just leaves Colossal who Dynamaxes and squishes our snowman. Looks like Mr. Rhyme didn't want to be part of this battle either since Melanie sends out Lapras next. She Dynamaxes and fires off her Max Geyser, which one-shots Gordy's Colossal, winning her the battle. It really seemed like the two of them didn't want to talk, so from there she just made her way down to Spike Myth and challenged Pierce. Her Frostmoth failed to land both of its Hurricanes, and Ice Q barely did any damage with Freeze Dry. Thankfully, their Manitan could finish it off with an Icicle Crash, but now we have to deal with Obstagoon, who can hit us back with powerful counters. It doesn't help that it's also super bulky. Even our strongest move, Flare Blitz, couldn't dent his HP. Good thing Mr. Rhyme is here to help. Oof, that's gonna hurt. But at least we've got his HP down to the red as well. And now we can toss an ice shard. And never mind. This thing is tougher to get through than Melanie. Hey! Lapras is out once again, using Surf to finish off this obstacle. Malamar may look like a squid, but can't hold up against the raging waves. Although it does play foul, so we'll have to heal up before taking on the Skuntank. Pierce tries to poison us and sucker punches, but neither are too effective against Melanie's ace, who just kept crashing waves to wash away this stinky cat. No wonder Melanie is so confident. Her Lapras has been turning the tides in almost every battle. See, I won without any problems or help from you. Now I believe you... Owe me an apology. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that like three times already. Hmm, seems that Mr. Rhyme has more manners than you, dear. This is going nowhere fast. Listen, Melanie, why does everything have to be your way or the highway? Because I'm always right, dear. Then what about Gordy? Were you always right about him? Of course I was right. If he had used ice types like I'd wanted him to, he wouldn't have lost to me so easily. But he still became a gym leader, didn't he? That's because I trained him so well. No, no it's not. <sighs> How do I get through to you? Think, Iceco, think. I, I just wanted him to be happy, and I thought the baby picture would make you happy like it makes me happy. But I said no, and clearly Gordy wasn't happy about being an ice type trainer either. Well, he doesn't know any better. He's just a kid. He's almost 30. Melanie, you gotta respect people's boundaries. Otherwise, you'll just end up hurting the people you care about. Aw, oh, come on. I think you're just being too sensitive. It was just a picture. No, but I'm trying to make a point so that you can understand why Gordy and I have been kind of upset and distant from you. Are you saying my boy doesn't like me? Oh my gosh. Melanie, I can see that you really care about him and that it kind of hurts you to be this distant. So I'm trying to explain to you why I think he's keeping so much space between you two. Because I'm a terrible mother? No, no. Stop going to the worst conclusions. I remember him saying nice things about you. It's more so because you're probably not respecting his boundaries or decisions. But if he doesn't listen to me, he's gonna struggle in life. But is he struggling now? No, but he could be better off if he was an ice type trainer instead. So you'd rather him follow your path and be unhappy? No, I'd rather you stop trying to gaslight me. I'm an ice type. I cannot use such moves. All I'm saying is that you should really consider what he wants and try to respect his choice a bit more. But then he'll struggle even more. Struggling is how we grow. Come to think of it, you're struggling right now too, aren't you? Struggling not to cry, yeah. Alright, well, I'm sorry for doubting your skills, Melanie. And I'm sorry for shoving the picture of baby Gordy in your face. Did you just- Don't question it! Now come on, we've got one more badge to get. Out of all the gym leaders, Melanie is the only one who's able to take down right hand according to the in-game lore. But can she do it for real for real? Their Manitan uses Icicle Crash to get rid of Flygon in one fell swoop. Meanwhile, Frostmoth sets up a Tailwind to speed things up before getting Rock Blasted out of existence. Melanie tries to be funny with Earthquake but fails to do much damage to either of her opponents. Meanwhile, right hand sets up some Stealth Rocks and paralyzes our main attacker. Ice Q managed to finish off the Sandaconda with its Freeze Dry but stood no chance against 
against the giant skyscraper. Mr. Rhyme and Lapras were out next, and by that I mean Mr. Rhyme was fodder while Lapras sat up on Auroraville with Max Resonance. Since I was also on the team, and this is doubles, I was kind of forced onto the battlefield, and of course the Duralodon decides to pick on me, giving Melanie the opening to finish it off while still Dynamaxed, and that just left Gigalith, who fell to a Max Geyser. For all that talk about not doubting her skill, she sure came close to losing this one. In fact, if I wasn't there to distract Duralodon, Melanie probably would have been done for. Guess she owes me an apology now. Anywho, having cleared all 8 gyms, she could now make her way through the Icy Route 10, which is where one would normally find an Ice Cube in the other game. Typically, when we get to Winden, we'd have to participate in the semi-finals first, where we battle against Marnie, Hop, and Bead. And gameplay-wise, they were all easily defeated. Bead was the only one to get Lapras onto the battlefield, but by then it was too late for him. So, it's actually time for the Champion Cup Finals, where all the gym leaders face off to see who gets to battle Leon for his title. First up was Nessa, who uses physical attackers and water type moves, which happened to be very weak to a certain freeze drying penguin who can negate one physical move no matter how strong it is. B, on the other hand, not so easy. She one shots Frostmoth but then leaves her Halucha wide open to Ice Q's frosty moves. Phalanx took a Zen headbutt like a champ and finished off her penguin with a close combat, which left its defenses lowered against Mr. Rhyme. We did not have this tap dancing clown during our first battle, and I kind of wish we did, since its psychic moves can just shred through B's team. Machamp survives thanks to the HP boost from Dynamax, but it has too little HP left after the Manitan gets to it. Oh right, I almost forgot that trainers in this game actually use healing items. It's got full HP now, but we've set up a max resonance defense wall, and then squished the tiny Machamp while we tried to cross chop us. Not very effective if you ask me. That left just Raihan again, but this time in the singles format and leading the battle with a sunny day Torkoal. Frostmoth is useless as ever, but their Manitan, yeah, this guy knows Earthquake. Up next is Raihan's fiery trap dragon, which will not hesitate to obliterate anything that touches its shell. And since it took a lot of damage from their Manitan, Raihan decided to use up his one-time heal while Mr. Rhyme set up a nasty plot to double its special attack. All powered up, we could now sweep with Psychic, then freeze dried. And the one time we didn't one-shot, Raihan was too busy trying to change the weather instead of change our HP bar. That left him with just Raladon, which used Max Rock fall to set up a sandstorm again, but since Mr. Rhyme lived, it could do some major damage before getting knocked out by the bad weather. Great! With two turns of Dynamax down, Ice Q came out to stall the last, and since the ice on its face was gone, the penguin was so fast that it could attack first the next turn and finish the fight. No Lapras needed. The lore was right, Melanie can definitely defeat Raihan, but only in singles. She can also defeat Eternatus, since dragon types are very much weak to ice type moves, and once it was defeated, Melanie had exactly 3 days to prepare for her battle with Leon. Except, instead of going to level up her team, Melanie went to Sir Chester to enjoy some more meals at Bob's Your Uncle and then relaxed a little bit at the hero's bath. And then a bit later, I saw her walking with Gordy, who was smiling for once. <sighs> what am I saying? I really need to go and bug her to level up her team a bit. Leon's team is all in the low to mid 60s, meanwhile, all of our Pokemon are in the high 50s. <sighs> but if she heard me say that, she'd be all like, just sit back and watch, and when I win, you owe me an apology. But what if she doesn't? Am I gonna be stuck here forever with her? We gotta level up. We really gotta level up. Oh my gosh, Melanie, please level up. You know what? I think I should go take a nap and try to calm down a little bit. So the days went by and we returned to Winden for the final match. Leon leads with his Aegislash while we lead with Frostmoth and surprise, surprise, it gets one shot. But this time it got to set up a Tailwind first. Ice Q was out next using Surf to deal some decent damage, but Leon goes for a special move that one shots us without disturbing the Ice Head. Things were not looking good. Thankfully, their mana tank could finish off the scrawny sword, one shot the Haxorus, bulked through Dragapult's flamethrower, and shook up Inteleon, but not enough. Since it is a water type, Mr. Rhyme could come on out and use Freeze Dry to take care of the water starter, and then the real evil clown shows up. Since we had so little HP left, our Mr. Rhyme couldn't come out on top, but the stage was set for Lapras to Dynamax and sweep with a Max Geyser. With Rain on our side, we could do some extra damage, but of course, the Dynamax Charizard is a lot faster and hits us with a Max Rockfall which doesn't do much damage. And it's at that moment that I realized, even though we were 5 levels lower, that Charizard stood no chance. It simply was not doing enough damage. So with our last Max Geyser, we washed away Leon's final Pokemon, claiming the title of champion.
Hey, Melanie, I'm sorry I doubted you. I don't remember you saying anything before this battle. I didn't say it, but I did think it. Well, I thank you for believing in me enough to keep quiet. I spent most of my time in Sir Chester researching Leon's battle style. You know, if you had just communicated that to me earlier, it really would have helped me be less anxious about it. So he really did rebuff on you, huh? He? Gordy? Yeah, that silly son of mine. After thinking about what you said, I decided to go and apologize for being so overbearing and pushy back when I used to train him. And when I explained some of my reasons for it and tried to acknowledge his choices, he got a lot more mellow all of a sudden. Well, yeah, if you leave people in the dark and just expect them to blindly trust you, that leaves a lot of room for doubt, worry, and anxiety. I think a little communication can go a long way. But hey, I'm proud of you for taking a step in the right direction. Why, thank you, dear. I guess I've got a lot of learning to do about this communication thing. It sure wasn't a problem when I was growing up. Back then, we had to do as we were told. No questions asked or else. Ah, uh, that explains a lot. I'm guessing you've grown up with a lot of worries yourself then. Probably why you're so picky about people's perception of your battle style. I don't know. I've never really thought about it. But I guess I should. Especially since that's a great excuse to go sit at the hero's bath. You really like that place, don't you? It's my favorite spot in all of Galar. A pool of warmth in a city that's been frozen over. If you ever feel lost on your journeys, be sure to drop by. The relaxing hot water is great for washing all the stress away after all. No wonder you like going there. Speaking of stress... Time for you to go already? Looks like it. To be honest, at first I kinda couldn't wait to leave. Ouch. Was I that bad of a trainer? At first, yeah, but since you were open to talking and trying to make things better, I kinda wish I could have stayed a bit longer and hang out with you some more. Likewise, dear. You were a lot of help. After all, it's thanks to you that I got to see Gordy smile again. It's not all me. You're the one who took a step forward. And it is quite the smile, isn't it? Spoken like a true member of the Gordy fan club. Want a picture for the road? Nah, I'm good. Besides, I can never forget someone as cool as Gordy. All right, then. I'll hang on to it for now. Safe travels, dear. Goodbye, Melanie. I think I remember now. Oh.